thank you so much for joining us kartik and uh, welcome for people who don't know kartik kartik is a uh, he's raj grad and he spent over a decade working in technology but he's mostly been focused on tech and business models related to internet infrastructure and services uh, kartik has worked in a very broad set of roles including strategy mna sales and currently finance and ops and prior to that he was a principal consultant in encode consulting a firm that recruited him from darden so very happy and very excited to have you kartik thank you thank you for having me jatin it's really good to talk to you again thank you um so uh, i have a lot of questions for you and i'm going to get started with uh, a concern area for a lot of um, applicants in the student community here kartik i have seen that from my experiences a lot of mba applicants from india are very keen on careers in technology whether it's finance roles or product management roles i also see a lot of people suggesting that they want to start something which sounds really cool fintech but i also know that many of them don't understand what these career paths are and and where will they take them now can you give a rough outline of what opportunities mbas can broadly focus on with companies that are high tech companies in in silicon valley so what exists for mbas um in the high tech world kartik i broadly put uh, these kind of decisions into three buckets right uh, the the first is like what kind of function do i want to be in the other is uh, what kind of industry do i want to develop experience in and the third is what kind of company do i want to go work so the 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 first is like functional role and when i say function it's um you know certain functions within companies like uh, product management sales strategy and ops program management sourcing business development corporate development finance and marketing now this is a lot of stuff and this is the machinery it takes to run uh, most companies um and you can find mbas uh, in roles across all of these functions uh, to be honest um typically the i i find that the only division that mbas aren't in uh, you know is engineering but there are a few of us hiding out in there too um so deciding what function you want to work in i think really depends on like what you want to do uh, you know and what your strengths are right like if, if you're like a strategist who obsesses over data you know product management's going to be a good fit for you um you know if you get excited about locking horns at the negotiating table then maybe it's like corporate development or business development um are you a natural storyteller um who likes to communicate an idea then maybe it's marketing that's that your jam right um so we could spend like a half hour on each function talking about what it entails and and what it is um i think the good part of it is like the functional areas are pretty well covered online like if if someone wanted to learn more about it this is one thing that you can you can gain experience about just by doing like online uh primary research uh but there's there's another dimension that you can't just as much and that's industry which is the, the second dimension so fintech is obviously an example of an industry um and it's an umbrella term for like a lot of companies that do a lot of different things in the financial services space married with technology right so like there are digital wallets like paypal and uh, venmo um there are cryptocurrency companies like coinbase um uh well there are lending and portfolio management uh companies like sofi uh, or robinhood and uh, there are a lot of enterprise uh, facing fintech companies too like brex which uh, makes these corporate credit cards that that target the the startup sector So um I I think in my honest opinion to figure out like whether you like an industry or not whether you're going to be a good fit for that industry or not you have to actually work in it uh and and really get the pulse of it it's not something that you can easily like figure out by primary research so the last thing that people are probably thinking about is like what kind of company do I want to work work at right? like do you want to work at something that's early stage or do you want to work at something that's a much more mature company So, you know, early stage company could be something that's small with like a singular product focus, it's trying to do something disruptive. Uh, a large company could have a, you know, big matrixed organization and it has a complex strategy and 
mature functional groups and they're all driving towards some kind of strategy uh, Karthik you bring that diversity of experiences now from the perspective of somebody applying from India looking at careers in high tech how do you think is the learning curve different for somebody who starts with a consulting firm and works in the high tech vertical versus somebody working in high tech firm itself how is yeah. the learning curve different yeah and i think i can most closely um talk about my experience you know being a consultant um at uh, at a consulting firm that focused on the the technology industry so I, like you mentioned in my intro um i worked at a company called incode consulting it it focuses on the pmt sector which is telecom media and, and technology sector um I, I primarily worked on like telco industry projects with like mobile operators and uh, cable companies and private equity companies trying to make investments in the space. Um, but I say that the larger consulting companies that are uh, better known, like McKinsey and BCG and Bain, um, they typically hire generalists. Uh, you know, the the folks who go into those roles don't have. an industry specialization when they start you start developing a specialization when you're kind of like a senior manager associate partner um so what you do at any consulting company irrespective of the industry specialization i think the first 3 years you get a wide array of experience even within my industry specialization i worked on product strategy uh, stuff i worked on strategic technology architecture stuff mna stuff go to market planning um i i think in that way consulting companies are great places to try your hand at many different things uh while building solid set of foundational skills It's like you know be building top notch financial models or um creating and delivering presentations to senior executives or um breaking down and analyzing problems in a, a structured manner I, I think you get to try your hand at that again and again and again, and you develop a, a certain skill. Consulting companies are a great place to try your hand at a lot of different things, and um, you know, be it financial modeling or creating and delivering presentations to senior execs, or um, you know, breaking down problems in a structured manner. You get you get a lot of experience doing that again and again. Uh, you know. My my wife, on the other hand, she she left uh, she left Darden to go work at UPS, which which is kind of a little bit more of a traditional brick and mortar uh, business uh, that's in the logistics space. Uh, and it's not that she didn't get the opportunity to to work on these things, but uh, if you work in a traditional company, you tend to uh, a traditional company, or you know, you go into something that's not consulting straight out of business school. You tend to start in a spe- specific function. For example, she she started. started in marketing several of my darling classmates left to start in finance or in ops and w- your career path there tends to be within the scope of the function itself and you grow within that you gain experience being a great finance manager or you get experience becoming a great product marketing manager and and that's the career path you you see for you, for yourself as you grow w- which is really different uh, you know from the experience you have at least in the first a uh, few years of uh consulting um the the big other big difference about consulting and working at a um, uh a, a, at a non consulting company is uh you know at a consulting company your advice is adopted by if you're really good your advice is adopted by your client it's executed well you sell more projects rack up some more billable hours you climb the ladder to become a partner at the firm uh you know but a lot lots and lots of projects can also end up on a shelf somewhere uh or you, you know in the modern day version in in like a dropbox folder somewhere so you also have to deal with a lot of tough uh working hours you spend a lot of time in airplanes and airports and in hotel rooms uh and working at like a tech company or you, you know a more traditional company um You, you kind of have to like suffer and celebrate the consequences of of your own work uh you know you do have more control over what it is that you want to achieve you don't think about life in 12 week increments uh 
you tend to think about everything in a little bit of the longer term, your career, your relationships with the people you're working with. Um, so it's just a little bit more predictability in your life, I would say. Uh, and and it's one one part I don't miss about uh, consulting is is the unpredictability of it. Um, yeah, there they can be different experiences, and there are pros and cons to it. I'm really learning a lot, Karthik. I'm telling you one thing, and I think people are going to get a lot of value from this because for I've seen that in the student for the student community that's a decade behind you it becomes very very theoretical at time you know people use in, these industries interchangeably in their essays or in their um, communication and 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 I, and i think it's important for people to get their access to the post mba world in greater details when they're making a very strong informed decision i i, I was just going to say like you know I, i certainly when i was applying i i was certainly shyer than i should have been about reaching out to more people um and i don't know what it was maybe it was my personality at that time but you know i i did a class i did a campus visit to darden and i met a lot of people there but in hindsight like i should have been reaching out to like more professors there more ex students uh and just you know li- linkedin uh, i i i don't know if i don't remember like how active i was on linkedin back then but there were certainly ways to like tap an alumni network at uh, any of the business schools i was applying to and really talk to them you were not like shy. i was working on your stories i remember you you were not shy karthik i think you were really <laughs> proactive and i want to say this that uh, it was a great experience working on working with you during that time because i think you were somebody who was on top of everything you know so <laughs> it it made my job very easy as well back then but 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 if i were talking to my like former self this is probably the advice i would give that person is like hey push yourself a little bit more there's more stuff you could be doing like even if you're doing a good job you could be like reaching out a little bit more and making a few more connections 100% agree 100% agree karthik you chose a you chose a general management program i mean darden is very very popular for general management right and it's very strong in that area on the east coast and then you established a great career in technology how did a general management program prepare you for you know what you get to do in your life in the high tech world yeah um so if i'm being honest the the darden um uh description of a general management program has always confused me a little bit because like what constitutes a good general management program does it mean that they give you a balanced set of uh, experiences in strategy finance ops decision analysis um valuation uh leadership uh if that is the definition i mean most business schools have a general management program <laughs> uh i i think what is different between most schools is uh schools develop a reputation so i think like schools are somewhat like companies in that they have deans that act like ceos uh and they have admission staff that act like recruiters right and um they're trying to get the best talent to come uh study at their schools uh their output is measured in uh you know how successful their graduates are and how many more people demand to come uh work or rather study at their institute um so they position themselves differently like companies position themselves differently so a school like stern being in the heart of new york certainly positions itself as a um a finance school um uh, university of chicago booth uh you know which is home to a lot of nobel prize winning economists uh you know pump up those credentials and talk about themselves as a quantitative financial school MIT and Harvard are on opposite sides of the river but have fundamentally different approaches to how they position themselves and and their programs so um i i i think uh what i got out of darden were mainly two things one is the case method which i absolutely loved i i would never go back to an educational experience that was in case method ever in my life again uh i got so much out of it uh the second thing i got out of it was 
uh, probably the strong pipeline Darden had into consulting. So if you go read Darden's latest um, job placement survey, where they try to like show you the breakdown of where students have gone. An enormous number of students have gone to consulting companies. So it's a great pipeline school for consulting. It's a great pipeline school for um, uh, in increasing numbers, a lot of roles in the tech industry and a lot of uh, general management positions in uh, companies that sell a variety of goods, like in, ranging from industrials to retail, right? Um, so trying to decide like, is the program's curriculum going to work for me? Uh, has to do like where you want to go. So if you're targeting a career in finance in Wall Street, Chicago um, or Stern or Columbia are, are probably better schools to target. Uh, if you want to go into entrepreneurship, uh, Stanford's known for that, um, and UC, UC Berkeley, Haas is known for. That. So you you really have to like assess like what the recruiting pipeline of the school looks like and how well their uh, curriculum kind of um, dances with that that recruiting pipeline, and and that's probably the the lens with uh, which people should be thinking about which school to go to. Okay, perfect. Um... What suggestions do you have for people looking for a career in high tech? People who have no absolute, absolutely no idea and they're just trying to move to a high tech firm. What do you think should they be aware of? What do you think should they be excited about? What would you tell them? Yeah. I mean, the first thing is to figure out whether technology is going to be something that you're interested in doing. Um, and I know it, it it's the like, nice shiny object um, uh, for a variety of reasons. When I went to engineering school, uh, electronics and communication engineering was the course that you had to be in. Uh, I'm not entirely sure why the reason was, but it was just this like, you, you know, there was this peer pressure that that was what you want to go to. There might be a, you know, a similar kind of aura around tech for a variety of reasons. I think you just like have to be curious about tech. If you're not curious about tech as you're as you're thinking about you know an MBA that leads you to a tech career, it's probably the wrong choice for you. You have to take a step back and really talk, talk about like what you know and where you want to go. Um, the the second thing I'd say is like you know, tech is such an umbrella term. I mean there are so many things you could be doing, so many uh, different sizes of companies you could be at, uh, geographically different places you could be working at a tech company. The customer base could be different, consumer versus enterprise. Uh, you know, you could be creating a platform company. Uh, so there's so many different things you could be doing. You do need to spend a little bit of time just understanding that a little bit and speaking eloquently. Uh, and you know, you're probably advising your uh, you know cl clients and and folks about this, uh, Jatin, but you know, that has to shine through a little bit in your essays, I think, right? Like how, how much you understand the industry and how you how you see yourself starting into it. Um, so I'd say uh, do your research, um, you know, think about the, the school that gets you to that goal. Um, and, uh, y you know, just make sure you're curious about, uh, you know, the shiny object uh, that, that you think you're interested in. <laughs> Last question for you, Kathik. Um, So this is for the, so although the video is for the wider audience, but since you're an engineer, I have, a, and I'm an engineer as well. Yeah. Uh, anything that you want to say to the engineer, the ones in across the colleges in the country, and you know yeah. how when I was in engineering, the world would come to an end with a small blister on the mark sheet. We would spend our lives uh, yeah. getting the shiny mark sheets and yeah. Chasing things that may not, I don't know. I'll I'll seek your viewpoint. And a lot of people today want to be where you are, Karthik. You know, so for engineers, uh, somebody Karthik went to a top school, top ten school in the world, and then he worked has worked across global high tech firms. And for people who are ten to fifteen years behind you, Karthik, what do you have to say to those people who want to? get to the kind of future that you're living in right now what message do you have for them um 
Uh, that, that's a, that's a heavy question. <laughs> uh, I know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I, first of all, first of all, when when we decided to get into engineering, I don't think we had a choice. Right? It was like <laughs> I, I have a distinct memory of asking my parents, like, what could I be when when I grow up? It was a very innocent question when I was young, and they looked at each other for a second and looked back at me and said, "You can either become an engineer," and I said, "I'll become an engineer." what i did and we ended up you know fulfilling those destinies a little bit um i i'd say like you know uh wh- whatever it is you know people are going through engineering school and there might be a lot of things that they're passionate about while they're in engineering school whatever it is that you're passionate about just embrace the heck out of it right lean into it like if if you are you know if you are a guy who loves pouring through the the textbooks and learning uh like 16 hours of the day but for the heck of it you just like love love it and you thrive in that do it absolutely if that's your jam pursue it um i think uh, don't i'd say don't try to chase a consulting career if uh you are in, if you're more comfortable like building stuff or you're less co- comfortable like speaking uh in uh to large groups of people if there's another area where you're just naturally comfortable in like find a path towards a career like the opportunities truly are endless these days for you if you're in a, a great engineering school and a great business school or any any kind of post graduate program um while i was in engineering school i i definitely did not have a, a great set of mark sheets i don't really remember what my gpa is i can tell you it was not good um <laughs> i think it was probably like sub 7.5 um but i leaped into like all the other stuff i did there i i was part of like a literary and debating club i ran around organizing college fest i made some friends for life um one of those friends ended up uh, coaching me for weeks so i could uh, crack the verbal section of the gmat and i i got a i got a 760 thanks to him um and and jatin you know who i'm talking about at uh at uh, y- you know at the company i worked at immediately after college undergrad like i ran around organizing employee events but little did i know it was it was a great opportunity for me to network with some of the senior executives of the company um you know i'm i i talked about debating i'm i'm a debater at heart and i i put that uh, that uh, personality uh into my role as a consultant in, into my role as a as a finance professional uh and you, you know I've, i think i've i've gained a reputation for providing like objective uh analysis and advice so i'd say like if you are passionate about studying and you want to score high marks because you want to enjoy the validation of knowing that stuff stone cold go for it <laughs> just, just go for it but don't don't miss out on the opportunities to develop more holistically as a person like you know people like satyan nadella and sundar pichai and indra nuri and shantanu narayan i i mean i'm sure they all like all kicked butt at uh, academics but you know they're not where they are just because they were able to crack a, a 9 point something gpa i mean they inspire large groups of people to do handle like and take on like huge big major challenges and uh the experience to do that and inspire that comes from some other place not necessarily a textbook so i'll i'll end it with that perfect awesome as i said that was my last question kartik it was fantastic to have you here thank you so much once again and uh, i know a lot of people are going to get a lot of value from this conversation here thank you thanks thanks sathan i i i hope so it was great catching up with you and great chatting with you